crazy market action. Let's jump right into it super quick. I am super excited to share with you this market action. So I just want to hop right into it and uh, show you guys some cool stuff that happened in the market. So let's go. All right, so we're on the daily chart right now. Remember this old opening range gap? Well, if we measure it out, we can see that we were at the consequent encroachment of that opening range gap this morning before the news driver hit. So, that kind of uh, led me to believe we're gonna see some lower price action today. Now, the reason I'm calling this crazy price action <laughs> is because of the outstanding precision. And of course, we're just starting on the daily as that is what we do, right? So daily chart, we're here, we have this old opening range gap, you know, we do have these highs up here, the London session highs, the consequent encroachment of a weekly fair value gap level right there. But considering we've been going higher for the past couple of days, it's Thursday, we just made a new high on Thursday. I mean, we were seeing potential for shorts. Let's just stop, drop right down to the one hour. Now, here we took out buy side liquidity this run happened at eight, making a new high of the week, high of the day, trading into the consequent encroachment of this opening range gap, which you all know, we came into that gap and then we had a sell off. We made a break of market structure right here. And this is our new opening range gap. Let's drop down to the 15 minute. All right, so 15 minute, you know, it's a prime, prime chart to be looking at, so we'll check this right on out. All right, so how do we get our opening range gaps? We go down to regular trading hours, right? Regular trading hours would be this candle's close, which for an up close candle, it would be at the top here. And then for a down close candle, we're looking for that open. So that would be at the top of this candle. So right here, is our range. I'll redraw it out just so you guys have a better idea of it. And we just go to the open right there. Now I like to have my templates set and I use black for opening range gaps. Okay, so let's go back to electronic trading hours. Okay, so we have our opening range gap here. And as you can see, it already pre-extends itself from this candle, which opens at 9.30 a.m. and this candle, which closes at 4 p.m. We close here and open here, and that's our opening range gap. Pretty awesome, pretty simple. We've learned that from ICT. We have the break of market structure right here, comes down, we open, we can't trade into this opening range gap. Okay, so when I first got on the charts this morning, I was like, my two draws on liquidity today are this daily inversion volume imbalance and this daily low slash daily fair value gap right here. I wanted to see the market drop lower, but again, we're not trading until our time frame of 10 to 11 for ICT silver bullet. Right? All right. So, unfortunately, we did not make a trade this morning. Yes, I know. But I just wanted to hop on here because of the precision of the market still. Even though it felt choppy all morning, we came up to this exact level, and that is just beautiful. Look at where we came up on this 1215 candle. Right there. You see that? You see that? What is the high of that candle? The high is 4417.50. What is the open of what is 
the close of this candle. 4417.50. The market came up, filled in the opening range gap to a T, and we dropped lower. I mean, that right there is beautiful. Now, like I said this morning, we didn't take a trade. Why? Like, I wanted to see the market go lower. The market obviously went lower. Why didn't it go lower during the morning session? Well, if we drop down to the five minute time frame, we see the market did trade lower. We had this five minute fair value gap right here and it traded into it at 950. My rules are I take a trade between 10 to 11, so I didn't take this trade. However, we did reach into my first objective. Now, why didn't I take a trade in any of this? Why didn't I sell? Well, the main reason I didn't was because look at this low right here at 8.35 a.m. Okay, we're going to quickly go to the NASDAQ. Look at this low at 8.35 a.m. We didn't take out that low. We were not gonna take that low out, even though the Dow dropped, the, the ES dropped, NASDAQ was like, nah, bro, I'm gonna go look for buy side liquidity. And guess what we did? We ran up, couldn't break that low, ran higher, ran higher again, ran higher again, before ultimately dropping lower. Now, let's compare them side to side. All right, so I have NASDAQ on the top, ES on the bottom here. We have both five minute charts. Let's get them evened out. So this was all pre-market movement. This drop right here was of course the 8.30 a.m. news driver, which was CPI. So we don't trade CPI. We still have this break of market or the break of market stru structure drop below here. We drop down. We then created an opening range gap at 9.30. Now, as you can see, the ES had dropped significantly lower, whereas the NAS was not willing to break this low. So when I seen this, it was 10 o'clock, the NAS still had yet to break that low. I sat on my hands, I waited. I didn't wanna get into a trade unless the NAS was gonna break that low. Why? Because the NAS and the ES and the Dow should move in tandem. They're sisters, you know, they're not twins, like I get it, but they should move together. So when they didn't, when the NAS did not break this low and the ES had dropped significantly, so did the Dow, I was a little skeptical. I was like, okay, hey, I'm not gonna take any more trades lower until I see the NAS break that low, but it did not. And we just took out this buy side liquidity on the NAS, continued to move higher, we did have the same sort of price movement on the ES, so I'm glad I didn't take a sell down here. You know, like it's good sometimes, you know, the best way to make money in the markets is to not trade the markets when they're not doing what you want them to do. <laughs> or just sitting on your hands. And I knew that this market was probably gonna consolidate around this area anyways unless we were gonna go lower, but I didn't get the confluence with the NAS and I didn't wanna take a trade in this. I mean, I was like, I don't wanna switch my bias. Like there's too much liquidity at the bottom there. The fact that we made like these relative equal lows on the NAS, I'm like, there's no way. Like the NAS is gonna have to do it eventually. So 11 o'clock happened and I happened to not get in a trade and that was completely fine with me. But I just wanted to show the precision of the E-mini S&P 500. How we still made these little highs, we came up perfectly, filled in the opening range gap perfectly, and then we moved lower. And actually taking out our extended 
T our extended drawn liquidity, which is the relative equal low sell side liquidity. So anyways, crazy market action. Super excited about it. I love the precision. I'm not upset that I didn't get in a trade. As a matter of fact, I'm happy with, even though we didn't get a trade, our directional bias was correct and I'm learning from that. So I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it. I enjoy watching these markets, seeing them unfold. So let me know if you like this video and I will see you all next time. Bye for now.